Good morning all. Welcome to today's show. Um, lots of little things to do today. So what we'll do is we'll get started with um, some very simple stuff to start with. Um, we're going to glue up uh, the boxes we made or we cut a couple of weeks ago. Um, and um, I want to repair some damage that I did to a little box or, or did to the, to the first frame we cut and um, show you how I go about that. And then we're going to do lots of other things. So a bit of hinging, a bit of rounding over. We'll see how far we get with all of this sort of stuff. So it's just going to be very easy today. And uh, so sit back and enjoy what's the show. And uh, hopefully um, I will give you some insights that you've not had before. So first of all, these are the two boxes that we, we cut up in the first show. And since then, what I've been doing is just various parts around the thing to get to give you an idea of what to do with the boxes. Um, I've made tops, bottoms. I've cut feet in. I've done all sorts of different things to the to the boxes, just to give you an idea of um, uh, some things that we could do with the boxes. Now, most of you have seen a lot of this, or some of you have. If you haven't, well then um, go back through the shows and you'll see um, what sort of things that we, we, we get up to. So the first thing is to, is to get the glue together. So I'll just put all this stuff aside. When I glue up, I always have a platform on my table. Now the platform, as you can see, is pretty grubby. It gets that way. I'd rather have the platform grubby than the top of the table and trying to um, just keep things nice and clean. The table gets enough as it is. So when I'm gluing, <coughs> what I did was I built everything and I assembled the whole lot dry and put the whole thing together. But when I pulled it apart, before I pulled it apart, I marked a couple of pieces with a cross just to make sure that those two pieces come together. Now, when they go together, I know that all the rest of the parts are going to go together because that's the way dovetails work. So when we glue it up, they're the first two parts that we pick up. So I always put my dovetail piece flat on the bench. I need a few tools, so I need Another little platform where I stick some glue. Now you can you can do whatever you like with these. You can you can have a little container or something like that. I find this does the job. Need a piece of something to wipe up the glue. Piece of paper towels adequate. So get this stuff ready before you start gluing, so that you're not looking for stuff as you go. So then. A clamp and of course a square so we need and I just use uh, our little um, pocket square that we make so I've got that already so everything's basically here I'm all set up now when I glue up when I glue up I hold the piece of timber with the inside of it in the palm of my hand. The reason being is I work from the outside of the piece of timber. You don't have to do it this way, but I find this quite, quite good. And when I put the glue on, you'll notice I don't put very much glue in there and I don't go all the way to the inside edge of the box. The reason, whoop. That was good. I caught it. The reason I do that is I don't want a whole lot of squeeze out on the inside of the box. And so we just work around like so. 
then I'd lay it down on the bench, take the other piece. Now the other piece has got the square on it, the, the cross on it, and that's the piece of work. Same process inside of the box in the palm of my hand and work from the outside in. Just like so. And then I'll pop that in place. Grab the other one, just make sure I've got the right piece. So that's the bit I want. I know watching me glue things up is like watching paint dry, but it's a necessary evil. We've got to get things glued together. The glue that I'm using is just PVA, uh, sorry, not PVA, is uh, Tide Bond 3. I find that that works really well because it, um, it takes a little while to dry. It's waterproof and um, it gives you enough time. It sets up in about 10 minutes, but it gives you time to do all the, a few of the little bits and things around the box, like squeezing it together and setting it up for square and all that sort of thing. Now, when I glue the, if you just look inside here, when I glue the parts together, the only place I put glue is on the end grain of the component that's going in there. So a bit of glue in here. You can see I'm not putting a lot in there. I'm just putting enough in there to actually hold things in place. I'm going to wipe the excess off. And you can see how much glue I've put in there. Not a real lot. Turn it around just so that you can see it. A little bit more. Like so. And then when we put the parts in, I've sanded the inside the parts. You can actually see the sheen on that when you look at it. it it's nice and shiny. So the inside and the outside's been pretty much done, but the inside, make sure you put the right part on the right place. That's the base. And then I've done exactly the same to this. You can see it's got a sheen on it. I've already sanded that quite nicely. This piece of rose mahogany as well. Just pop that in there. We built that last week, if you remember rightly. If you have a look back on the shows, you'll see that I've made that fit. So now I have that set up. And I find this technique of building things like this very easy, very simple. Again, a little bit of glue here. Like so. Now my end panel, again, same process. Inside, you can see, now I'm working on, this is the thicker piece of timber, this is the back edge. You can see it's much thicker. This is the 10 millimeter section that's going to have the hinge in it when I put the hinges on the box. Just make sure you put this on the right way. I've seen people put them on back to front. That doesn't help. Because when you get it on there and you can't fit it together and you tend to squeeze it up, doesn't really work very well. So now that I've got that together like that, like so, squeeze it together. Oh, you hear that crack? Didn't break anything, it just popped in. Turn it over. Give it a squeeze up. Squeeze it up again. Now, there isn't any need to squeeze it up this way. Sometimes I do that, but there isn't any need to do that because of the way the dovetails work. They will go into the right place anyway. So I'll just give it a check.
Now I'm not too concerned about all the glue that's on the outside of it. All I'm doing now is I want to check to see that all my joints have pulled up nice and tight. You can see I've got a little bit of squeeze out happening on the outside of the box. That's not a problem because I'm going to eventually sand that off anyway. But I just want to make sure they don't have any gaps in there. There's nothing happening. I've got a nice even frame happening here. And so all I need to do now is check for square. Now it's a bit hard to check the top edge, so I turn the box over and check the bottom. And while it's wet, you can see you can see it's qu not quite at square. See, it's, it's, it's got a bit of a gap here, touching there, touching all the way along here. But I've got a little bit of a gap there. So what we can do is just give it a bit of a tweak. So just give it a squeeze, and all I'm doing is pushing it this way. And now I have that square, so I'll just check the rest of it. That square there, that square there, that square there. Now, I rarely leave clamps on. I find that if you've left the clamps on, they tend to sort of squash the box out of shape. Just using that to clean up a little bit of glue that's on there. And as you can see, lovely and square everything fits nicely just take that change that shape a little bit you can see i've got a little bit of movement in there and that's exactly what we want so that the box can expand and contract so basically that's ready to go now i'll put that aside i'll grab the other one i'll very quickly i'll glue that together as well but i've got a repair to do on this one Now, as you can see on here, the end of it came off. Now, that, that snapped off during the process of, um, during the process of uh, cutting the joints. So I've tidied it up a little bit. I've cut, cut the excess and all the, the jagged bits off it, and um, I've made a little piece to fit in there. So I'll show you how that goes together in, in a sec. So very quickly, I'll glue this together. So again... Same process, got my cross. Okay, so obviously those two parts go together, like so. And um, we'll start the right way. Once you get this sorted and you, you, you get a technique involved with, with this stuff, you'll find that um, you can do this relatively quickly. It doesn't take it doesn't take that long to 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 glue up um, half a dozen boxes or so. So building three or four boxes at a time sometimes it works really well. So here we go. Now this one's going to have a repair on it. So I'm going to glue the this part together first and get the whole framework fitted. That one goes in there. You'll see, you'll see there's a gap here. I'll just turn the other camera on. You can see that there's a, a little gap there. That's because when I push it down, the, 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 the dovetails have come through, the, the pins have come through the dovetails and they're touching the top of the table. So that little gap, not too concerned about it at this stage. Remember, we have plenty of time. So, doesn't mean to say we have to have a cup of tea between gluing up, but it does mean that uh, we've got to glue up relatively quickly. Here's my parts. This one here, I've, I've used a piece of uh, Queensland maple as the top panel instead of a piece of rose mahogany like I did on the other one. But I, I did exactly the same thing. This is the rose mahogany for the base. So that's going to go in there like that. And a nice piece of uh, Queensland maple. 
You can use any panel you like. You can see there's a variation there. You can see a little bit of, a little bit of contrast there. Get all this back together. There's two ways around doing the repair. Again, same process. Put the big fat back one on the on last. Don't have to, but I find that by putting the odd bits on last, all the rest of it's all even. So all the framework is all exactly the same size. This one here is a little bit different, so I'll do that last. And we pop this on here. As you can see, that hasn't taken me very long at all, actually, to get that glued together. Just wipe off the excess there. Sit it down. Squeeze it up. Now, this one here, um, you can see my clamp doesn't go all the way down to the bottom there. So squeezing this together, I need to flip them over. I tend to do this anyway on most of the boxes that I build, is to flip them over and get them from the other side as well when I squeeze them up. If your joints are good, it doesn't, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort. I've got a little gap in here, so I'm going to set that in the middle. Keep it reasonably square. Put that in there. So now I have that nice and squeezed up, nice and tight. Again, my lid has a little bit of play in it, so I can adjust that before the glue dries. And then wipe off my excess. squeeze out happening there. As I said before, it doesn't really matter about the squeeze out on the outside. It's going to get sanded off anyway. Okay, so there's my damage. I'm just going to check for square before I actually do this. So turn him over. Just make sure that's perfectly square. Most of the time they just pop straight into to where they're going, but because I've been fiddling with this, I just need to make sure they're perfect. Okay, so here's my damage. That's, that's the bit that I ended up cutting out. And what I've done is I made two of them. These are two little pieces of material. What I've done is I've cut the whole piece off so that you can see, you can see the shape of the dovetail is showing here, here, and here. And I also need to have it up there. So what I've done is I've cut the whole piece off and I've made a little piece. I don't know if you can see that. I've made a little piece that's shaped a bit like a dovetail. And, that, and that's not that hard to do that. So, can you see that on there? Just get that bit on the right way. And this one here is a little bit bigger. All right. So I've made, I've made two of them. One's a bit bigger than the other. I don't know which one I'm going to use yet. I'm just going to try it and see what it looks like. So that will fit like so. Now I've made it out of the same material as the box. So what we have is we have a joint here, right? And you're going to be able to see that joint where the, where the pin actually meets the, the end of the dovetail. You've got again a join there, which you're going to see. You've got a join here where the two parts meet, and that's going to be the end of that bit there. The only piece that's going to look odd is you might have a line across the piece here. So let's find something to point with, and I can show you what. 
So the only place that you may have a line is across there. Now normally what I would do with a box like this that we're going to split in half is I, would, I should have put the feet in the bottom of it so that it was, it's on the bottom of the box. But I didn't do that so we have to go with what we've got. And you can see that it's not going to look out of place. Once that's sanded down to size, and I think I'll use that piece there, you can see that it sticks up, it sits up high, it protrudes out through the end of it, okay, and it's flush with the front edge of the box. So the, what I've done is I've made the piece bigger than I actually need so that when I sand it down, I can fix up any little errors that might have, or any little gaps or anything like that that might occur during the process. So now it's just a matter of gluing that together. Now, luckily I damaged this before it was glued together. Now, if it was already glued together and I, I damaged it, so I'm just going to hold that in place for two seconds, just a little while, just to hold it in place, just as it goes. If I glued it together first and then damaged it, the process would be a little different. I, I, I wouldn't be using PVA or any sort of PVA glue to glue things together because I'd want it to glue together really quickly. But because this has got to sit and dry anyway, I might as well use the, the tight bond. Normally what I would use is a bit of super glue. And super glue dries up very quickly and you can get it in various sizes. I use the Loctite one because it, there's plenty in the bottle. Um, so that's I would glue it together with that. Now, the other thing that's important with this is to make sure that when you glue it together, just come in back. When you glue it together, make sure that the grain on your piece of repair material is the same as the piece it's gluing to. So I need it to be exactly the same as there. So the grain on here is continuous. The grain on here is continuous. And the end grain is exactly the same there, there, there and there. All right. So that's the important thing that you need to remember. You can't just get any old piece of timber and just slap it on there. This is a piece of material, it's actually an offcut from that board that I've just added onto there. And hopefully it will be exactly the same colour. I don't have to sort of fiddle around trying to, trying to um, uh, match colours and match timber, timber quality and all that sort of thing. So it, it, it just gives it, it's the same piece of timber and all I've done is just cut the off, yep, made the piece and now I'll just glue it back together. So that will stay nicely and I'll just glue that together. What you can do if you like is you can put a piece of tape over that to hold it in place but that is actually set really really nicely and it will glue, glue up beautifully. So when that, um, when that dries um, I'll sand that like I've sanded all the rest of the pieces. pieces. So that's basically one of the ways that I repair something when I've got a repair that I have to do. Now the box will be, um, it, it will come up quite nicely and once I've got it, yeah, see that's already set. Good. Okay, put that aside. Now I'm going to go to, whoop, now I'm going to go to the, let's clean up all of this stuff. Bin that, put that away, get rid of all of this, my brush, you'll notice the brush isn't a very big brush when I'm doing the smaller joints, I've got a range of brushes that I use, get rid of this, get rid of that. Now I'm going to go on to the other box that I cut last week. So I just want to make an explanation before I go. When, when we cut the boxes in half, I've got two of them, because there's the, the, little, the little one and the bigger one. You can see there is a, a difference. So we made the two boxes together. 
in the top of this I've got um, a piece of red banks here which is very similar colouring to the rose mahogany but, uh, but a, a little bit contrasted too as well so it looks quite nice. So what we're going to do with these two boxes, the first thing I'm going to do, when we cut the box in half, when we cut the box in half, I used a, a router bit to cut, cut the parts in the router here, I cut, cut the top off with the router bit. One side of the router bit was actually cutting onto the piece of timber and on the other side it was cutting off the piece of timber. So one side was a little furry because of the way it was cutting. You're climb routing on one side and you're um, doing normal process on the other side. So what happens there is you get a furry side. So we have to tidy that up before we go too much further. Now, you'll have seen in the past I've had this little, I'll just go to the bigger camera, I've had this little sanding board. Oh, big sanding board of course, it's quite long. So normally this is what I, I do, I'll, I'll go through and use the bigger sanding boards. But for a small box like this where I'm only taking a very small amount of material off, I don't need something this big. Okay. So what I've done, swap these over, made up some small ones. Now the small ones, this one's only 240, the small ones are, are, are quite fine. We're not taking lots of material off, we're only taking off little bits. So we don't need to put a whole lot of weight into something and sand it away until we've got it perfectly flat. All we're trying to do is just to clean up the surface and make it nice and workable so that we can go on with the next process. So all I do with that, now you can do this on a piece of glass or something flat. I've got it on a piece of MDF and um, I find that adequate for that. It's only, it's only a sheet of sandpaper so you can go to your local hardware store and pick up however many sheets. And what I try to do here, when I'm sanding it, is I use the longest distance on the sandpaper. So from here to there is the longest distance, the same here. And very light pressure, that's all we need to do. Don't drag the, piece of the, the box off the piece of sandpaper because that means that there's more sanding happening on that bit than there is on this bit. And often what shall happen is you'll catch the edge of the sandpaper and you'll fold it over. So if you stay on the piece of sandpaper, light pressure, a little bit of pressure that way, across from corner to corner on this way, and basically that's all you need to do to get yourself a perfectly flat surface. So it, it's, not, it's not rocket science and it, it's, it's very simple and easy to do. And for those of you who haven't got all the fancy bells and whistles, perfect, does the job really nicely. So have a think about that when, you, when you're setting up. And you can do these, you can see on this one here I've got a piece of 240. Um, you can make a hundred of them with various different grades of sandpaper on them. And when it wears out, turn it over, stick a piece to the other side of the board and go again. And then when that's finished, you can discard that and build yourself a new one. So that's that process. So now that's what I've done with both of these boxes. So this box and this box, they're both flush. They both match up so that when they open up, they're going to lay flat. So my next process now is to, first of all, I'm going to round over some parts of the box. So the top edges are going to get rounded over. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to round over all the top edges, but I'm going to show you something else that I do that just adds another little feature. I'm going to round over the feet. Okay, so I'll show you that as well. Very simple task, it's not hard, but it does add an extra 
extra thing. Now, the smallest of my rounding over bits is the one we have in our kit. Lock it in place, turn the box over. into here. Now when I set this up, what I'm going to do drop the router bit down. And what a perfect curve. So all I'm setting up is right onto the tip of the router bit, the tip edge, I can show you on another route a bit. So what I've done is I've set it up so that this tip, you can see that, is sitting at the bottom edge of the, the board. So all I need to do now is race around the edges of that. Now make sure it's the top. You can do a tester if you like. But I've done it so many times now, I've pretty much got it down pat. So, ears on everybody. Make sure you're going against the rotation. So it's going to rotate this way, we've got to go that way. So what that, uh, that's done is taking the sharpness off the box. That sharp edge that you see all the way around the outside, it looks nicer because I've got it rounded over. And it also makes the thinner parts of the box look quite thin. So that, that's actually a quite a nice feature. And it also takes away the fact that I've got a 10 millimeter piece at the back. It doesn't look so big now. Okay, so it's quite small. So I'll do that on that box. I'll do that to this box as well. So ears on again, folks. Now, as I said to you earlier, um, I'm going to show you another little, little thing that I do. The feet, my four feet, go back of here again, you can see they look quite square. Right? And when you set that on the, on the bench, you can actually see how square it is. But what I want to do is I want to create the shadow all the way along the box, so I'm going to round over that and still have the feature of having four points of contact with the bench. So rounding that over is just exactly the same thing. So here we go.
So now you can see I've got this lovely rounded over section. I've still got a flat part of it, okay? So it's still a little bit flat on the top, so that gives you a, your contact with the bench. And I've rounded over and created a shadow line all the way along the box, okay? So I'll do that to the big one as well. Shoes on. As you can see, that looks uh, really neat. Just a nice little feature, that extra feature that you can add to your box making. So that's that one. Now, back to the top part. So let's take this out. This is the next bit that a lot of people ask me, um, what's the quickest, easiest, and simplest way of putting hinges in? I I find that if, if I'm making um, a bespoke box, if somebody rings me up and says, Cole, can you make me a box? Everything's done by hand. So I use a fancy pair of chisel, a fancy chisel and, and so forth and, and, and cut my hinges by hand. I find that gives a, a much better result. Now, but when I'm making boxes like these that, that um, and I don't, I don't know the, the reasoning, but I, I tend to find it a little easier to actually use different techniques to, to, to cut the hinge rebates. For the simpler boxes, for the boxes where I'm going to give them away as a gift or anything like that, um, I tend to use tools. So I use router bits to cut the hinge rebates. But the important thing to remember with that is that you must make sure that the when you're cutting a hinge rebate that the tool that you're using is exactly the same size as the hinge. If I'm doing a bespoke box, it doesn't get standard ordinary hinges. It gets quality hinges. Um, so you've got to make sure that um, if you're putting quality hinges in, you want a quality work around it, make it look nice. But for this box, all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut the, the rebates in the top here. I'm just going to cut them with, um, with a router bit. Now, where do we put the hinges? I'm going to use two different sized, two different sized hinges. This one up there so you can see. This one here is uh, a 19 millimeter hinge. So in that box we've got, that's a stop hinge. In this box here, I have a one inch hinge. Now this, these hinges here are, 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 are relatively inexpensive uh, Chinese versions and um, they're, they're one inch, not 25 mil, one inch. This one here is a reasonably good quality. This is a Gurner hinge uh, from Anton, Anton Gurner's uh, stable down in, in Melbourne. Uh, very good quality. Oh, actually, I beg your pardon, it's not a Gurner hinge. This one here is a, a Brusso hinge from the US. Um, and the US use not 19 mil, but three quarter hinges. So a good quality hinge, it's a stop hinge. The Gurner hinge is what I'm going to be using for our box. So as you can see, two different sizes, so two different router bits. Let's get those out of the way. Now where to put them? That's the thing. Lots of people go, oh, I don't know where to put it. I have here, 
This is again a hinge, it's a butt hinge. Get it apart. We're using butt hinges. So these 25 mil and the smaller one is going to be the 19 mil. So we're going to put the 19 mil in the thin box and we're going to put the uh, 25 mil in the bigger box. So this is the smaller box. No, this is the bigger box in the back end. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit that where we need it. Okay, I've got the second one here. So it's going to go in there. So what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to sort of have a little judge about where it's going to go. You don't want them too close together. You don't want them too far apart. So where to put them so that they look like they look nice and neat. So that looks quite good. So I'll measure up that. And again, this is a visual thing. What do we got there? Well, it's 30 millimetres to the edge, and that's fine. So if I put that one at 30 mil, that doesn't look too bad. So that's with that, the, the bigger hinge. The smaller hinge, where are we going to put that one? So if I do that at 30 mil as well, it looks way odd. Where's the other hinge? There it is. It looks really odd. If I do that one at 30 as well. So you can see you can see the difference, you know, like the same size box, but that looks really awkward. So let's push it out another 10 millimeters. Take it to 40. Get it out of the way. It still looks too close together. So let's come out another to 35. That looks a whole lot better. Okay, so that's probably where I'll put them in. So this one here gets a 35. This one here I'll set to 30 millimetres. So now, setting up to do that. I've got a couple of router bits. This is my 19 millimetre router bit. So that one's going to cut with that. I've got a carby tool, um, 25 mil. You can see 25 mil router bit. That will go on that one. If I was doing one inch, I would use a one inch router bit. If I was doing 19 mil, uh, sorry, three quarters, I would use a three quarter router bit. This one here is a 19 mil, which is the same size as that. And it's always a good idea to measure them just to make sure. I always make sure I've got them the right size. And using pair of vernier calipers, just measure the length. So you can see that perfectly 19 mil. I've got it upside down, but hey, you can see that. So just making sure that you've got your measurements correct, make sure the router bit it fits the job. Let's get some of this out of the way. Now the other thing that I do before I start is with the router bit, I make myself a little tester. So this is what my little tester is. You see I've cut it. So that one goes in there. And when I turn it over, that one goes in there. Okay, so it sits nice and neat and it's clean. So just a piece of off cut and I've just cut myself something to test my joints. Have a look at this.
So what I've done there, you can see that it's, it's flush. Okay, so it's flush all the way across the, the joint. So we'll do this one first. We want it nice and flush. Now one way of setting up, we use our tester piece as our gauge. Just a little bit. Beautiful. Okay, so that's my gauge, and all I'm going to do now is feed across my piece of timber. Get out of the way. Get these out of the way. Now, this is the bottom piece, so I have to cut in my uh, thick piece. That's the bit I'm going to cut. I need to set a fence up, and all I'm going to do is feed that across there. So, my fence. Tuck this in. Now, my distance for the little one was 35 millimetres. So make sure when you measure this, you make sure the ruler goes across square on your fence and across the center of your router bit. So this one was 35 mil. So I'm touching the two points of the router of, of the router bit and the fence, it's square on the fence. And then we lock that in place. Now when we cut this, go slow. Okay, so all I'm going to do here is feed straight across my, rat, my um, work. But when I do the other side, I'm going to come back this way. Okay, so that the router bit is pushing my piece of material to the fence at all times. Okay, here's on folks. Now I need to do the top. Okay, so that's going to be my top bit. So when I fit my hinge in there, you can see it's a perfect fit. This looks really nice. That'll be a perfect fit in there. It's just a matter of screwing it in place now. Okay. So.
what I might do is I might take that a little deeper and you can do that don't change too much because I notice that one of my hinges is actually thicker on the outside on one side than the other so I need to take it a little deeper so I'm going to set up It's a tiny little bit thicker. Got to get that right. Gears on, folks. Just going to take a little bit more off. That's a much nicer fit. Just needed to come down a tiny little bit more. Beautiful. It's going to look really nice once I get it screwed into place. Actually, I'm going to have to take a little bit more off one of them again. Something going on here. Yeah, wasn't right down. You see, they're very snug, very nice little fit. And once that's screwed down, I'm going to have a tiny little gap at the back which is fine, and that will open out nicely, like so. My hinges are in place. Okay, so they just need to be screwed in place, like that. Oh, it's come apart again, never mind. Okay, I'll do the other box. And then next week we will be able to screw everything together and do some more internal componentry on the boxes. So I've got five minutes left. That will give me time to do these two. Again, use the correct route a bit. So we are going to the 25mm route a bit. So as you can see, a lot of it, a little bit of a fiddle, but the results are pretty good. I'm going to use the, the hinge as my judge this time, my gauge. Just want to be on the top of that hinge. Too far. Okay. 
Okay, now my distance on this one was only 30 millimeters. So if I grab my ruler, should have come in with that now. Same thing, set up exactly the same way. Just try and come into 30 mil. Across the points of both of the router bits. So this router bit's a little bit bigger and tends to sort of vibrate a bit more. But it will give you a really good result. Okay, gears on. I did. As you can hear that one it tends to vibrate a little bit more but we're still getting the same sort of result we're still getting a nice smooth finish and we're getting a perfect fit with our hinge so that's that's what we're trying to achieve to begin with we want a nice clean fit and doing it this way we've got the right distances you'll notice I, only, I hardly ever used a ruler to get this one to fit I'll just try to get this open So you can see that fits really neatly. Drag that over. And I can put that piece in place. And you can see it, it's flush on the sides. Down along the sides here, it's quite flush. And I've got a nice fit of the hinge in the back. So it, it does come up really, really nicely. And, and that's, this is what we're trying to achieve. Somebody said, oh, it's so hard to get them right. But it doesn't take a whole lot to get them so that they fit together nicely. And then when I open the box and lay the box flat, <laughs> uh, got it stuck together again. I closed it over too quickly. You can see that. That's going to open nicely. I broke a fingernail doing that. Oh dear. And they're nice and neat fit too. So that, that's the beauty of it. So simple. Fairly easy, very little damage, and uh, quite a nice, quite a nice result. So next week I'm going to go through fitting the hinges to them. We've got already cut the rebates, fitting the hinges. We'll put inserts in them. We'll put framework inside. Get things sanded up. Hopefully I will have these all sanded up, and I will have that repair um, done for you so that you can uh, see how I do that. Um, I will, will, will sand all that off and make that quite pretty, but I'll sand off the rest of the box as well and um, you'll see what it looks like when I've got it um, sanded up. It, very similar to that one there. So that's what we'll do for next week. Um, so that'll be it for today. Please stay safe everybody and um, I will see you all next week. Oh, by the way, Dave is going to be doing a new project today. He's starting um, a laundry cabinet, I believe. So that could be exciting, maybe. Anyway, see you all next week. Have a good week.